right, guys, welcome to another episode of Subtle Asian Voices. I'm your host, Norman, and I have a really special friend here with us here today. This is uh, Rebecca, and she's going to tell a little bit about her uh, career and her little life, her likes, whatever she wants to talk about. This is her platform to little, just tell, tell, us, tell us about herself, you know? All right. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Norman. How's it going? Good. It's uh, a <laughs> nice and beautiful sunny in Chicago today. So uh, it's a it's a rainy day here today. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, well, thank you for having me on your show. Um, it's uh, it's great that you're doing this virtually and creating yes. this space for Asian Americans. Yes. Yeah. I'll get started. So I uh, came to the U.S. when I was ten years old from China. Um, my family and I first lived in Boston uh, and then moved to New Jersey mm. where I went to high school. Um, and uh, I ended up in Chicago for college. And that's where I met our mutual friend, Louis Lara, who is uh, hiking it up in uh, Northern California right yeah, in now. Sonoma, in Sonoma. Yep. Yep. Right. Living the life. Yep. Um, jealous <laughs> of him. I but um, yeah, but right now I am the executive director of the American Business Immigration Coalition, uh, which is a national organization of about 1,200 employers, CEOs, business associations across 13 states. Um, wow. Our federal mission is comprehensive immigration reform that increases high and low skill visas um, and uh, agricultural visas and creates a path to citizenship for the 11 million undocumented. Mm -hmm. um, so I manage a team of 17 full-time staff and uh, seven uh, contractors and uh, four lobbyists, uh, consultants and a whole gamut of folks once were wow. in, the, in the political season. And so I've been doing this work now I don't know, since college. Uh, so it's been a good 11, 12 years now. Wow. I really love it. Um, and um, yeah, so happy, happy to be here. Cool. But well, like, like being Asian, right? Like, and being from China, like, how did you even end up in this career path that you got into? Yeah, and I think probably like most typical Asians and, and immigrants, um, mm -hmm. I was or uh, I was told, you know, brought up that I should be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, and um, just career mm -hmm. choices that, and, and understandably, my parents want me to make money and um, and be financially secure. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, um, I wasn't that good at math growing up. Like I think I really wanted to fit into that stereotype and make mm -hmm. my parents proud, right? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't that good at math or chemistry or physics, nor was I like that interested in, in working really hard at it to get better. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say in college when I, when I, um, when I uh, came to the University of Chicago, I uh, just you know, took classes in the social sciences and politics. Um, and then also personally, that's when I realized that, you know, my mother was undocumented and mm -hmm. had an order of deportations and nearly got deported while oh, I was wow. in college. And so for me, you know, I just wanted to make sure I was doing something to first and foremost, like directly help my mother. Um, and I will also say that, you know, like Lewis knows this, I was like active in different clubs and, and mm -hmm. like social causes. And mm -hmm. that was like my first exposure into the advocacy world. And I liked being kind of like a leader and working with a team and figuring out a strategy. And then, um, and then Lewis can tell you this funny story where I don't even know how he, he became like the selection committee for uh, graduation speakers and you mm. can like nominate people and then the student body or faculty selects the final speakers so you know he nominated me and then I became one of the speakers and wow. I don't know just like that also that sense of um, I have something to contribute that could mm -hmm. add value and mm -hmm. that I had a voice um, I think made me feel um, uh, feel like I could create an impact right and also made me personally feel more more confident in my ability. So I would say like kind of all of those sort of forces, both personal mm -hmm. and public, um, mm -hmm. and it brought me to, to where I am today, which is, you know, not, an, not a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, but mm -hmm. um, just very, very satisfied with, with my, my professional life. That's good. 
but like how did you even find out uh, how did you find that position that you get like, you're that in like how did you where did you look um like, how did you find that path to get into that to that, to that job like, what how did you go yeah, through? i wasn't just in um you know in college i was looking for for just something i didn't know what mm -hmm. i was looking for but i was looking for something that was first um able to help my mom mm -hmm. and so i started exploring and i took an internship my uh the summer of my junior year with this uh they're called now um asian american advancing justice they're mm -hmm. a national organization and they have different state chapters so so I became an intern that summer, and then after uh, college, I got hired on as a as just a community organizer, sort of like a street organizer, mm -hmm. um, and getting paid like two hundred fifty dollars a week to go door knocking mm -hmm. uh, and register Chinese voters in Chicago's Chinatown. Oh wow! And so just really climbing from the bottom, but those like experiences of lessening understanding. Um, the pressures on people's lives, what was keeping them up at night, what mm -hmm. were issues that they really cared about and that they were willing to come together and work on. Mm -hmm. So I sort of started there and then from kind of very local, working with very local nonprofits and advocacy organizations, I got hired on and became the director of organizing for a statewide organization in Illinois. You know, I ran a couple bills, had successes, and then from there was sort of scouted right by, by national, and and now I'm working for a, an employer-based, business-based organization um, that has you know the sort of the same end goal as other um, entities in terms of immigration reform, but come from a very economic, uh, business-focused voice. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I was just say the trajectory is like I was really trying to figure out something I was passionate about, something mm -hmm. I felt there was an urgency because of my mother. And then um, and then, uh, yeah, and then just sort of going from the from the bottom and, and, and working hard and having some results and just then trying to look for for other you know bigger opportunities. Right. And like, did you just use like Google or LinkedIn or like, like, what was the, how did you find it? Like, did you just like, someone told you about this job and then they mm -hmm. just gave it, like told you to apply or, or you had to research it and like, that's how you found it. For me and in this sort of political space, organizing political space that I'm in is a lot of relationships. Okay. It's a lot of, you know, the, we don't want nobody, nobody sent. And mm -hmm. so just, you know, really from every job that I had kind of building my reputation. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, those relationships help to deliver uh, sort of the next step in my career. Okay. Um, or that it opened up sort of multiple options. And I was, um, you know, able to pick the one that was, you know, for me, that's, I, I think about it in terms of making the biggest impact mm -hmm. and to where I can professionally, right. Like develop, um, as a, as not just as somebody who's you know really good at, uh, uh, implementing, but also mm -hmm. somebody who's really good at building a team and managing a team and managing a board and fundraising. Right. So like, I think about what are areas I want to grow into mm -hmm. and then the opportunity that then, um, are provided right by the relationships that I have. So I would say less the sort of internet and research and the different engines, but rather just personal relationships, oh, okay. um, at least for me. Okay, that's good. And like, so like throughout your whole time, you know, working in your field, like what has been the most proud moment that you've, you know, that you got or best experience that, you, that you've experienced so far? Um, well, we had a really nice win this morning. Mm -hmm. So this morning, um, the Senate passed uh, President Biden's $1.9 trillion mm -hmm. uh, COVID relief package, the American Recovery Plan. Mm -hmm. And we flipped eight moderate Democrats to support uh, stimulus checks for um for families, a mixed status families, right? Mm, and yeah. so the, those eight Democrats voted against it about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, 
nobody thought they were going to change their mind because you know politicians are like we don't want to be flip-flopping and blah mm-hmm. blah blah we need to be consistent mm-hmm. but we really did the work our partners did the work my members did the work and today they all voted with us and so mm-hmm. that was like a really just incredible moment because that means about five million uh, immigrant mixed status families will mm-hmm. get these fourteen hundred dollar checks, and they were left out before. And this is about seven point nine billion dollars in terms of relief that these families and, yes. and many of them, right, are the essential workers. They're the um, um, they pick the crops and they mm-hmm. sell take the food at our restaurants. You know, they're the ones that are holding your hand when you're on a ventilator. So mm-hmm. there are these, you know, essential workers that our economy has ignored. So I'd say that one. Um, and then when I ran the driver's licenses bill mm-hmm. in Illinois and it had failed for 14 years. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, obviously I like kind of stood on the shoulders of giants and I, it's not like I made it happen by myself but mm-hmm. the year that I ran it we did win it and it was 380,000 uh, undocumented immigrants who just are no longer in fear of the simple act of driving mm-hmm. and then seeing those physical driver's licenses printed out and carried by people I know um, and care about was was just it was really um, really satisfying that's great um and then I would just say my team, right? Mm-hmm. Like I would say two and a half years ago, mm-hmm. my team was two people. It was me and two people. And now we have expanded to, if you add my full-time and part-time and my lobbyist team, we're like a little bit over 30. Mm-hmm. And so just, you know, we grew very fast. Um, and then I had to grow very fast to be a good manager. And mm-hmm. it, I was not, it was not easy like it was it was very difficult for me right and I feel like I'm at a point where I'm seeing um just growth in in my team mm-hmm. and that I'm like finding a lot of satisfaction to be a better um mentor mm-hmm. um and I have so much more room to grow and it wasn't an area I say like I was that interested in because I'm like I'm such a like I I won't I just I'm um I don't know, like I'm kind of a, like an action figure. I just like want to win. Right. Right. But I think having a much bigger team has made me slow down. And mm-hmm. then like, I actually have to work through other people mm-hmm. and cultivate other people. And mm-hmm. I think, I didn't think I was going to enjoy that, but I actually really, really find that satisfying as well. So I would say that building, building a team now. That's has good. Been, it's been that's, great, yeah. that's good. And like, so like I hear about this mixed status, you know, my, families right and like what what hurdles do they have to go through in order to like get that path into to citizenship right because i have a friend who is he's american but he's married to a a, a foreigner um but they have having a, the hardest time trying to get a visa, just a visa just to come here so what are some of the hurdles that that these people face that is i feel like a lot of us who are born here do not have this you know, like knowledge of them struggling. And I want to know what, how they're, how are they struggling? What are the hurdles that they have to face in order to get to this path to citizenship? Yeah. So there is around 1.7 million U.S. citizens who are married to undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. And there's around, and they have I think in total about 3.5 million U.S. citizen children. Mm-hmm. So in total, there's about 5 million U.S. citizens who are impacted mm-hmm. or, or live within a mixed status household. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I experienced that. Like my dad and I were U.S. citizens and my mother was undocumented, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it's incredible. Like they can't, you know, my mother couldn't go home to China when my grandparents passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she she was separated from her siblings for 23 years and then they become strangers, you know, right. they, they grow apart. Um, and um, and then also you kind of have to make the choice as a, this undocumented person to you either leave your immediate family or you leave your parents, right? Which mm-hmm. you know was a decision my mother had to make. 
So yeah, I mean, I think in every level, it's just it's a lot of human suffering and trauma that I mm-hmm. think we don't we don't really talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also, I think, economically a poor decision for a nation, right? It's like when people are 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 not able to legalize um, their their economic potential is handicapped. Um, like just for my mother, when when she became a citizen, she was able to go back to the to the um to the hospital and and um and treat like cancer and uh, tumors and you know help patients she was a doctor in china mm. and when she didn't have paper she worked in chinese restaurants right so it's just really? you know it's not good for for our nation's economy so and but like like what are the roadblocks that they that they face right like what is what is the government doing to not give them to give these people an easier way to get a citizenship what's happening there yeah so right now the i think this was part of the 1996 kind of law that passed Mm -hmm. where um there's the path that you can uh, sponsor your undocumented spouse Mm -hmm. is um through a um through a law where they have to go back right like if Mm -hmm. your spouse is undocumented like you know my mother if my dad sponsored her, she would have had to return to China first mm-hmm. and then wait for the decision there. And then you risk that the decision could be negative and then mm-hmm. you're just stuck there, right? Right. So then oftentimes people just don't do anything. You're just sort of like static. Um, and so hopefully, right, with the with President Biden's uh, current immigration plan, what he does is he removes those bars, but he also just creates this eight-year eight, eight path to citizenship, Mm-hmm. for those um, 11 million that are in the limbo um you know it doesn't really have any republican support right now um, mm-hmm. but there are, is republican support for the bipartisan dream act right so you can start with legalizing like these very sympathetic very popular dreamers mm-hmm. um or you know farm workers there's bipartisanship there so i think that you know for a lot of these mixed status families um you know, this this next two years will there will be some hope and good news and, and we'll keep pushing and and what's powerful is like these mixed status families at least these two million adults can vote mm-hmm. right there's mm-hmm. seventy thousand some in in um, in Florida and that's why last year Senator Rubio um, was actually a hero right like he filed a bill so at least these U.S. citizen spouses can get COVID checks and. And then Senator Scott also supported it, and, mm-hmm. and you know now it's it's law, and 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 we're we're making more progress on that's this. That's good. Yeah, that's great that that this creating more progress. I feel like a lot of things that that the public has like a negative view on immigration. They have like the media, the media or or just people in general. They have a, a negative view on on immigration, and they treat immigrants as like. A plague or something and i feel like once you put some human emotion to into their stories i think people would you know be more you know nice about it and not just treat you know immigrants as a, some kind of negative issue and it reminds me of of you know a show you know on hbo max you know called warriors and it had the same kind of vibe to it where the immigrant Chinese people came to America to work and all they wanted to do was just provide, you know, food for the families, make money and, and just work like most people want to do, not, you know, and and all you see is the, I guess the native, you know, Americans that were already there, even though they were immigrants as well too, they were complaining and causing a, a big issue with these immigrants that were just trying to do the same thing as as the Irish that were in this show, and I think it needs to be you know shown that there's some kind of emotion about it, right? Like, how do you feel? Did you ever see that show? Yes, it's my most favorite show ever, and I right. hope everyone and your uh, big and growing audience everybody go to see it yes. it's called warrior on hbo max and then yes. norman just told me some episodes are now free right on youtube yes on youtube <laughs> yes yes everybody but- needs to see it so yes i i love it for two reasons um the 
the reason you just named mm-hmm. um and uh and but the pri or i wouldn't say primary but an equal reason that i love this show is because it has uh di- very diverse and dynamic asian characters right so mm-hmm. like a lot of times although i think it is definitely getting better right but like it's like when i first came to america yeah, like those are are very like uh have very limited roles yes right? like the that doctor in um what is that er show that was popular with george clooney yeah er oh yeah ER. ER. yeah yeah i had like this one in you know the asian doctor she was really good too but mm-hmm. anyways but this one has diverse characters there are the heroes there's the villain there is the you know the um um uh, fighters the gangs and then there's just like normal people trying to make it through the day yeah and they're all cast together and some of them are also just like incredibly attractive and oh and then they're also really funny right and like mm-hmm. that's I, i'm clever and so anyway so for all of that it's it's just it's great to see right like are people yeah. portrayed as and, and a positive um, like more masculine more just a human right not just some sidekick who is there for show or you know but this actually gives you know asians a little better light you know you're you're able to be a, a lover a fighter uh you know just you know a friend you know a dad or son or daughter like just family like you're giving them an actual three-dimensional you know personality that's that is usually not given to minorities in general and i think this show encapsulates that that very well you know and and also gives a little bit of you know a a voice to immigrants as well too right exactly exactly yeah do you you feel like it's what you're trying to do with your show to mm -hmm. paint the multiple you know shapes and colors of exactly and community yeah but i think on the policy and the history piece absolutely Mm -hmm. and the politics right like there's like moments in the show where the mayor of san francisco Mm -hmm. is telling this this one like gang in chinatown i need blood on the street right like i need i need um just chaos so that Mm -hmm. it was going to be politically good for my career right Uh, either at the city or or at the you know the state he was like gonna run for senator or something And it's like exactly what we saw this last year with Trump, right? Trump descends the elevator. What does he say? Immigrants are criminals and rapists, yeah, right? right? And that kind of creates fear and generate excitement from his base. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, it's it was it, yeah. It no. parallels a lot. It's like you can tell from like the eighteen hundreds, just come on, like a long time ago, right? You know, and you still like flash forward to the, to the modern times. And it's still the same exact storyline that's being that's being told to the, the population, right? Like you see in the beginning, you have the Chinese Exclusion Act like that, that they're trying to you know in, invoke, and somehow it's I don't know how this how this comes about, right? Like it's crazy. Yeah, I think I was reading something about just the. It's actually very kind of human um maybe it's genetic for us the um the kind of the dark dark side of all of us right mm-hmm. to be racist to be mm-hmm. um prejudice prejudice yes. right and to kind of fear um the other right mm-hmm. and that given enough uh in enough attention or enough um like oxygen that part of us get express like you know yeah, like, it's, it's um, excited and it's just like oh wow this is this is an issue right right or like this is the easy way to solve my problems mm-hmm. to solve my grievance right mm-hmm. and that's blame somebody else to blame somebody else basically right right, right. and mm-hmm. and so that that's right what what trump did and and fortunately the majority of americans right seven million more rejected that kind of mm-hmm. hate and base behavior and yes. um yeah yeah uh, that's that, that really gives you a little hope you know like when you start you know listening to other people and you start listening to other stories like 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 for you like you i'm sure you heard so many stories um that you heard about you know about their struggles and when you are able to understand the person that they are you for, you start to 
you know, you know, forget that, you know, this immigrant, you know, right? And you start giving them a name, right? So I think it's very important to actually get these stories out there and have people listen, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. People have less fear over what they know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's crazy. But so like, what else have you like, is on your mind, you know, in terms of this topic, like, like, what do you think needs to happen in order for the people to finally wake up? Yeah, I, you know, I, I do think that the ultimate solution um, is to get to know people unlike mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And it's easy. And I fall into this trap too, of just um, being in the same bubble. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, like a lot of my work and my uh, coalition work is is talking to Republicans. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy. And what we see in the news, right, are the sort of the Trumpiest Republicans. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say there's a, a really good number that want to do something different, that want to stand, have a different position. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, taking the time to getting to know them and also their constituents mm -hmm. um, and, and building that relationship. I think COVID has made it um, not easier, but I think it has brought that to our attention, just like the the need to kind of slow down yes. and reflect and build mm -hmm. relationships. And um, even if it has to be virtual um, or, you know, distance and safe mm -hmm. outside. But I'm really hoping that on the other side of, of COVID that, you know, we are a more connected and like more deeply, not just superficially, but deeply connected mm -hmm. and, um, society, community of people, and that people have the sort of the curiosity and the and the patience, right, to get to know one another. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and I think it, that will help, like, yeah. um, strengthen, I, enrich all of us. Yes, I've definitely noticed that, you know, like a lot of stories have been, are being released into in the public for different voices of, of people like we have stories of, of muslim immigration muslim people we have chinese people we have hispanic people we have you know black people we have all sorts of people being finally finally getting their stories told on tv now and we have and i think this you know covid time which has allowed people to slow down and actually think because they have nothing else to do right so now they're like thinking about you know other problems and, and i think it finally you know waking up right so i think this whole time period has been a blessing and a curse i guess right <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has been but like have you seen like like remy and some of that like this show on, on hulu is about this muslim um character no what's it called it's called remy r-e-m-y remy okay yeah, it's, it's it's a pretty okay. good like like back when um, like 9-11 happened, you know, Muslims were very much like today's coronavirus, you know, with the Chinese people and or Asians in general. And this show, you know, kind of highlights high a little bit and I guess it like, gives you a little background information about uh, Muslim people. And I think that helps out, you know, tell the stories, right? And mm -hmm. I think this was a, a really, you know, interesting because I've never really you know, seeing any show that had, you know, Muslims or, or Middle Eastern faces on them. And, and I watched it and I, and I learned a lot. So I think this this time period has got a lot of stories out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. Cool. I'm going to wow. check it out. Yeah, I should. feel like you've given me some really good recommendations. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I try to like, you know, learn about other people. And I think this is what it takes to, you know, improve the world i guess right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'm i'm glad that you're actually doing stuff out there to actually improve the world or at least the country right so mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. i think you are too i mean you know the what the what you're doing right now i mean it's not your day job right you spend mm -hmm. a lot of time to try to like connect and mm -hmm. and and really paint a more um representative and complicated picture of asians mm -hmm. but you also like you build relationships right you put asians 
of different walks of life and relationship with each other. And so, yes. um, no, it's great. Most people don't. Most people just stay in their own bubble. I yeah. mean, like I, it's much easier for me to do that than reaching out. So, mm-hmm. no, you're you're doing. And, and I think that what you're doing then has like a multiplier effect, right? Mm-hmm. And then other people feel feel good and then reach out to others. So yeah, that's, that's where it starts. Yeah, I'm hoping that becomes the case, you know, and this becomes something you know greater than what it is. And we're able to unite, right? So but like, so like, let's go back to some of your uh, more personal stuff, right? Like, so what, like since you came, came into your job like how has your mom felt about you being into this career career like, like tell me about her yeah. towards your, your career i think at the start they didn't like both my mom and my dad um they they didn't really understand what i was doing i think mm-hmm. for like because i started working in this field in 2008 and so mm-hmm. for like the first few years they they just would tell their friends that I was working for Obama, right? Mm. Which I wasn't uh. <laughs> at all, uh-huh. but that's kind of like how they understood it. Like she's right. doing some activism and they're trying to tell Obama to do something. So, but then later on, like when I started getting more successes and mm-hmm. I got more attention, like especially from the media or I was invited to speak with the governor or I, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago we had a, a virtual meeting with President Biden, right? Like things like that. Then they're like, oh, you know, she's she's doing something important or she's doing mm-hmm. something impactful. Mm-hmm. Right. And and so yeah, so it's definitely like evolved their perception of of what I'm doing. And you know, and both of my friends are I would say it are very proud now. So <laughs> you, you say it with like a, like a sigh, right? a relief. Or... Yeah, but you know, it's. I think it's easier. I feel like to deal with parents' expectation or perception mm-hmm. when like you yourself is personally satisfied with mm-hmm. the work, mm-hmm. um, but that also the work brings so many like rich relationships, mm-hmm. um, like in my public life, right? And mm-hmm. I just it's yeah it's very fulfilling Mm -hmm. um like was it hard to explain to them like because did you you have to use chinese to tell them or were they or because i feel like it's a pretty difficult thing to explain to parents you know asian parents in general what you do if it's not doctor engineering or yeah i think what they how they understand it now is that i am helping immigrants i'm Mm -hmm. helping people like my family and particularly my mother Mm -hmm. um and so i think in the beginning it was kind of like oh why is she doing that and you know she could be doing something more prestigious but Mm -hmm. now i um do have a national kind of profile mm-hmm. and I have um, other like validators including you know senators or CEOs mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know even the White House that they feel like oh this is just as of you know high stature as mm-hmm. some of these other professional careers so mm-hmm. um yeah okay. like so uh, so now I kind of want to understand right like because I kind of remember how my parents came in like it kind of went, came through with like chain migration like so like their family members asked them to come and somehow within a few years you know they became um, citizens right so how has that changed from previous generations until now like has it has it been because i hear it's like harder now to get you know, that citizenship right like how has it changed from, mm. from back in the day and now because i feel like for me yeah. i didn't understand how hard it was but now it's much harder, right? Like, can you explain that change? Yeah, I mean, especially the last four years has made it, you know, very difficult, if not impossible, Mm -hmm. um, because uh, what the previous administration did was slash different uh, visa categories, uh, these like legal pathways that a lot of agents have utilized, um, such as, uh, you know, family sponsorship, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think the average wait previously was about 15 to 20 years for Chinese Americans, you know, mm-hmm. which is still like very long. Mm-hmm. I think under the previous administration that, you know, 
those years were at like five to 10 more, like 25 to 30. And so most people give up. Like, why, why would you want to wait a third of your life right. to go to a country? Um, that doesn't yeah. really give you anything. No. And, it, and, right? and then in addition to that, I think what was most drastic was that he cut, um, Trump cut uh, different visa categories like H-1Bs and H H-4s. So um, the common visa categories are, you know, are people used to, to come here and usually through employment. Mm -hmm. um, and he also cut um, or made it much longer even for spouses mm -hmm. in sponsoring. So this last year and a half really was, I mean, yes, there's the pandemic, but still when travel opened up a little bit, um, you know, spouses say they are in China or mm -hmm. Singapore, like can't, can't get here to get reunited with their mm -hmm. husband or wife. Right. And so I, I know, you know, Biden is working to rebuild and uh, a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the last last four, four or five years, it's been really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's just from coming from the other side, right? Like, like I want to understand, like, like, what are the like positives, right? Like that people are saying that the reasons why these immigration, you know, denials are happening, like why, like what is what are the people saying? to get these, you know, you know, roadblocks, right? To get the past, right? Like, like, what are they saying to say, oh, this is what we need? Like, what, what's the, what's the reason that they're lengthening the, the, and making these issues harder for people to get into this country? Yeah. So, you know, for Trump, it was his, um, just overall philosophy, right? That, mm -hmm. that immigrants are detractors mm -hmm. that, um, he, uh, that American jobs first, American worker first, that immigrants uh, were, were taking away and they were competitive with mm -hmm. American workers. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, operate under that philosophy, then every avenue at every visa category, even spouses, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about, you know, it's not that you're competing against another tech worker, like you mm -hmm. want your wife or husband to come here mm -hmm. um, and you're a US citizen, right? And mm -hmm. so that's like, your right in the constitution. So slowing all of that down or eliminating those categories is how he justified it, right? This mm -hmm. like, I am the president for, for American first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we know that that's with all the facts and data that that's all false, yes. that mm -hmm. the immigrants um, are often not competitive with American workers that at both the low skill or the high skill ends that they they do jobs that native born Americans either do not want to do right like picking crops or bussing tables mm -hmm. or are just because of our education system aren't skilled enough or there's not enough native born educated in fields like mm -hmm. science technology engineering math and all the stem fields to fill all the openings we have in our um in our economy right and mm -hmm. like we want to be the top economy in the country, I mean, in the world, and in order to do that, you need to be able to attract the most talented around the world, right? Like that's mm -hmm. always been um, how America's has, um, thrive, has right? um, yeah, has thrived, has mm -hmm. become number one, right? And and so so those are the facts. So you know, with Trump, right? Like it was about um, the using that fear, the you know what we saw in Warrior. To, to score political points mm -hmm. um, and um, and rather than you know base it on facts and and the fact that you know we want our country to prosper and continue to be globally number one competitive so mm -hmm. basically just fed on the fear of, of the people right right mm. yeah so besides that right like like how would you give advice to the people who are listening, who are watching this, um, how to enter your space, right? Like, what should they do? Like, how would they get the voices heard? Like, what they should do at their at their current times to get more active? Because we see now that you know Asian voices are getting higher, right? We see you know all these you know Asian violence that's happening. Right. How do we improve our voices in, in society and, and become more active? 
Yeah, um, I think that, um, I mean, one is just vote and not just vote during presidential years, but mm -hmm. during the off years for your uh, different, you know, from your school board to city to state and then vote during primaries. Not a lot of people vote during the primaries. Yeah. So when we come out, you know, in big numbers, that will make a bit a difference. And then that's when they will pay attention to the, the politicians. Mm -hmm. I'll say then also, you know, just run for office. Yeah. Um, those that, that want, that can, and, you know, have the aspiration because um, like Asians have, even if like our population is so small compared to the others, we, we, we can build coalitions, a multi-ethnic or multi-income coalition mm -hmm. that will support our candidacy. Um, and then I just say like what you're doing, right? Kind of just building relationships and, and, and being curious and figuring out, um, you know, what are the, the issues and, and understand each other and, mm -hmm. and from there, you know, create a better world. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. do you have any like, like sites that you know of that would help people? Oh, like websites. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Oof. Or just, or just in general, like like coalitions or companies that you know of, out, out of the you know blue that that you would know to show people to get involved with. Um, I have to get back to you. Okay. I am actually not. I say everybody drawing whatever Norman's creating here. <laughs> if you're Asian, okay. I mean, this seems like a really cool and and also unique space, right? right. Mm -hmm. So then I don't know if you want to take this where you hold like monthly or bi monthly, just like virtual happy hours or something mm -hmm. for people that you're right. you know engaging with to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, I mean I feel like there's not like that many spaces just for Asians or young mm -hmm. Asian professionals. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, maybe you're you know you're really making if you're there, something create, new here. Create one yourself, right? If you don't right. you know, if you don't see it, create it yourself, right? Yep. Find people that like you. Yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah, um, I think. I'm really glad that we were able to, you know, talk to each other. And I think you've given a lot of insight into like how the struggles of, of the immigrants, right? And I think we really need to learn about that more often. And I definitely hope, you know, we get to spread that far and wide and give that that immigrants are not your enemy, that they're actually your friend, you know? So I, I'm really glad that, you, that you're able to speak to us with us today. So, and... Um, that's do right. Any, do you have any shout outs that you want to give? Yeah, shout out to Lewis for connecting <laughs> us. I met uh, Norman through Lewis. Uh, shout out to our other mutual friend, Karina. I hope mm -hmm. she's doing well. Uh -huh. um, and then, oh, and everybody go watch Warrior. Warrior. <laughs> go watch Warrior. Consume Amazing. all the media. All the media. Yes. All right, guys. Have a good day. See ya. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Norman.